Five years, six months, and 27 days ago, I sat in the emergency room of the OSU Medical Center. I was in a really bad place in my life. At this point in time, I'd lost my will to live. I was suicidal. As you can imagine, I was terrified. That familiar smell of hospital disinfectants started to settle in. Then the fluorescent lighting. Then the sound of emergency pages and stretchers and shuffling outside my door. I thought for sure I'm trapped. I'm going to get locked away here, and this is going to be my new home. As afraid as I was, I was more afraid of people finding out what was happening to me. And the reason was that I spent the better part of two years telling everybody I was fine. I told my friends, I told my classmates, I told my coworkers, I even told my parents that I was just fine. But the truth is I wasn't fine, I was broken. And I was coming apart at the seams. And a lot of people have asked me, what happened to you that got you to your rock bottom, assuming there's a tragic story tied to it? And the truth is, there isn't one. In relative terms, I was normal. I had a good family. I had good friends. I had good grades. I was an athlete, and I got to college. Everything appeared just fine. But for a long time, I got all these achievements and a relative amount of success out of fear. I was afraid of being a bad son. I was afraid of losing friendships. I was afraid of failing. I was afraid of not leaving my hometown and becoming something more. So I got somewhere, but what starts to happen when you operate out of fear like this is that you ultimately start trying to live up to other people's standards and expectations, and you do what you're told, not what you want to do. Had I been doing things out of passion and what I wanted to do, I would have been inspired and achieved the same things, but I would have owned them and I would have felt better about them. And instead, that didn't happen. And soon enough, in trying to live up to everybody else's standards and expectations, I spiraled downward to that rock bottom and that dark place where I felt like I was drowning. So I'm in the ER, and there's one thing I've yet to try in this process of two years of trying to fake it, and that was to be vulnerable. I looked at the doctor and I said, I need help. I'm not okay. And by doing that, I permitted myself to get help. I permitted myself to get better. And that's exactly what happened. And I equate this process to learning how to swim because you just kind of throw yourself in the deep end when you're vulnerable like that. And it's scary. And you're thrashing, you're fighting. And before you know it, you're starting to paddle. And you're kicking your legs. And you're starting to tread water. You learn how to swim. What's funny about this metaphor is that at the time, I literally did not know how to swim. So it's been a few years since the ER. I decide to take a vacation with my friends to Hawaii. I'm terrified of water and have never learned how to swim. So I'm on the beach with my friends, and I'm watching the thousands of people surf and bodyboard and snorkel and do all the stuff that you're supposed to do when you're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And I'm frustrated, and I'm upset, and I'm angry that I can't do anything. So I had a choice much like I did in the hospital, and that is to be vulnerable or to fake it and say, no, that's all right, the salt water doesn't do it for me, no thank you. But instead, I was vulnerable. I expected ridicule, I expected, what do you mean you don't know how to swim? You're an adult. But instead, my friends said, how can we help? What can we do to get you to overcome this fear of water? So I spent the next two days trying and failing and trying and failing and trying and failing to put my head below water with a snorkel mask on. Finally, at the end of the second day, with my friends and new acquaintances' help, 
I put my head below the water to look through the snorkel mask. And all of this was in preparation of what was to happen next. So on that third day, I woke up before dawn, and I went to a port on the north shore of Oahu, near Waimea Bay. And I took a small fishing boat on the most beautiful boat ride I've ever been on. It was dawn, so the sun was just coming up over the ocean and the island. And as you can see, the water was the most pristine blue I've ever seen water be in nature. The boat rose and fell heavy with every single wave we came across. And finally, when we got to our destination, I froze. I was so paralyzed with fear, I couldn't breathe, I could barely see, and I tried to stand up, and my legs buckled from underneath of me. I looked at my best friend to the left and said, I can't do this, I'm too afraid. And he looked back at me and said, yes, you can, you can do this. I didn't think I could do what happened next. I'm still in shock I did what happened next. But I jumped into this cage. This is an open top cage in the Pacific Ocean, several miles away from shore, surrounded by roughly two dozen sharks that are hungry from the blood that's being dumped off the back of the boat. When I jumped into the cage, two things happened. First, I hyperventilated for the very first time, and I filled my snorkel mask with snot and seawater. But I held on to that cage for dear life and learned what white knuckle tight meant. And after several minutes, I did something that still surprises me today. I let go. And for the very first time in my life, I was floating in water, which just so happened to be surrounded by sharks in the Pacific Ocean. When I got back to Ohio, I literally learned how to swim. In Brene Brown's 2010 TED Talk, The Power of Vulnerability, she spoke of her research, and what she found was that what underpins shame and fear is vulnerability. That by being vulnerable, you can both overcome shame, such as shame of being depressed and suicidal, and fear, such as fear of telling someone, or fear of sharks, fear of water, you can overcome. In my experience, I found that by being vulnerable time and time again, over and over, in big ways like the hospital and the shark cage, and in other smaller ways in those everyday challenges that we face, you start to build up courage to face fears and to do what you're passionate about, like you've heard today. Like for myself, I quit the job that you're supposed to have, that pays well. I took a 50% pay cut. I left all the benefits behind to do what really excites me every day and what I'm passionate about. So I ask you, what are you afraid of out there? What are you afraid of in here? And will you be vulnerable for the sole purpose to learn how to swim?